Yeah, I need a suit. Suit? Twenty twenty for Marvel didn't go as planned at all. They released no major movies, and their Disney Plus lineup of shows also got delayed. However, twenty twenty one is going well for them, and is aiming to be quite the blockbuster from start to finish. One division is already released. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is almost done. Black Widow comes in July. Shang Chi just got his first teaser trailer. The Eternals won't be far behind, and then there's Spider Man No Way Home. This film has been teasing just about everything under the sun, and if even half of it is honest and true, we could be in for something legendary. Allow us to show you eight reasons why Spider-Man No Way Home will be the best Spider-Man film. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Eight, Far From Home recap. A key reason why No Way Home might be the best Spider-Man film is due to the setup that its predecessor, Spider-Man Far From Home, gave us. You see. The majority of the film was Peter Parker becoming much more of a hero and coming out of the shadow of Iron Man that he had placed himself in after his death. He defeated Mysterio and saved everyone, but it wasn't that clean of an ending. Because Mysterio went and pulled off one last trick. He went and framed Spider-Man for everything and made it seem like he was trying to kill everyone and even killed Mysterio. As if that wasn't enough, Mysterio exposed Spider-Man's identity to the world. So now everyone knows he's Peter Parker and as the title suggests, he can't go home now due to the fact that everyone in law enforcement and beyond is going to be looking for him. So yeah, a typical bad luck Peter Parker storyline. 7. Into the Spider-Verse? Okay, now let's get into the thing that everyone is talking about, the multiverse storyline. Many people have been hoping that this would happen after the beloved animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse came out, but they didn't know if the third live action film in Tom Holland's line would do that. At present, it definitely does seem so, because there have been all sorts of casting announcements and rumors about who is going to be in the film in either a big or a small way. The ones we can 100% confirm is that of Jamie Foxx coming back as a version of Electro and Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock. The reason these castings are important is because at present, there are three main Spider-Man live action universes. We don't count the live action Japanese show for very good reasons. There's the Sam Raimi films, which helped prove that Spider-Man could thrive in live action. And then there's the Amazing Spider-Man line that was a bit more divisive amongst fans. If these villains are indeed the ones from their respective films, the second Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, that would definitely indicate a multiverse storyline. And that would be awesome, especially with six Spider-Men. Yeah. Another rumor that delves into the realms of the Spider-Verse is that of Tobey Maguire and Andy Garfield are going to return and be Spider-Man once again. At present, these are just rumors as neither side has confirmed this or denied this in a meaningful way. If they were to do this though, that wouldn't just be epic, it would be legendary. There are very few cases of this being actually possible. Batman is one that is technically doing it with the upcoming Flash film and multiple live action flashes and even Superman have met in the Arrowverse. And as such, this means a lot to a lot of people. The question of what these three Spider-Men will need to fight is still obviously up in the air, but if it works out like many people hope it will, seeing these three Spider-Men work with one another and connect with one another will be all kinds of awesome. Of course, there is one rumor out about who might show up. Five, Matt Murdock. You see, when Marvel was first trying to expand their MCU, they didn't do it by making Disney+. Plus. They went to the leading streaming platform in Netflix and made a series of collaborations with them that delved into the street level of the MCU and even made sure to connect them all together. The most successful of these Marvel-Netflix collaborations was Daredevil, a dark and powerful thriller starring Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock. For three seasons, the show wowed fans with its interpretations of Daredevil, Elektra, Punisher, who got his own spin-off series because of that, and of course, Kingpin, whom many consider the best MCU villain over all others, even Loki. Where does this tie into No Way Home? Simple, the two are connected and Peter Parker is likely going to need a lawyer in order to defend himself against all these accusations. The rumors of Matt Murdock being brought back in also fit with Disney slash Marvel owning the rights to him again after the Daredevil series was canceled on Netflix. In fact, the entire Defenders line is now back with them, so they could use this as a springboard to launch Daredevil Season 4, which many are hoping for. Bringing in this character wouldn't just up the hype for the film, 
It would show that Marvel is listening to the fans who have been begging to hashtag save Daredevil for years now, and not unlike a certain other fan movement that made the cut, they deserve to have their due. Four, focus outside of school. This one will be a sticky point for some fans because the Tom Holland films have very much focused on Peter Parker in his high school days, which in a certain way is fine, and even the other two Spider-Man universes did that in their own ways, but there was a little bit of a divide in the far from home viewing audience in how much the film focused on the school quote unquote antics versus delving into the deeper storyline. From the teachers talking about witches to the cringe scene of Peter trying to get the photo back from the guy trying to be with MJ, to Ned's relationship, and so on. It was a bit much, and the movie really didn't need it. But with No Way Home, that won't be an issue for a very basic reason. Peter can't go back to school now. <laughs> Granted, we know for a fact that MJ, Ned, and even Flash are gonna be around in the movie via photos that have been released, but their relationship with Peter will be much more of a focus than the school elements that connected them previously, including likely Flash realizing just how much of a jerk he was to Peter. Just saying. Three, J. Jonah Jameson. In every superhero comic, there are supporting characters who are absolutely vital to fleshing out a story and creating interesting dynamics. In the Spider-Man universe, characters like Aunt May, Mary Jane, Harry Osborn, and others fill those roles. But the one that everyone likes to talk about is J. Jonah Jameson. In the Sam Raimi films, he was played by beloved actor J.K. Simmons, and then in the Amazing Spider-Man films, he wasn't shown at all. So imagine the happiness of the fans when JJ showed back up, and it was JK playing him. Yep, in a feat of poetic justice, it was J. Jonah Jameson who exposed Spider-Man to the world, and apparently, he'll be back in the third film in some capacity. If so, we're in line for something fun and special, and just seeing JJ back in full form and fury will be a treat. Two, a multiversal villain? While it's been confirmed that the multiverse will be apparently opening up to bring back past characters like Doc Ock, Electro, and possible some Spider-Men, the question becomes, why? Don't get us wrong, I'm, we know that there's a Marvel multiverse and we're getting another look at it via the upcoming Doctor Strange sequel, but the question here is more of why is this happening here and with Spider-Man? Yes, Spider-Man does have multiversal villains, including one that kicked off the comic arc into the Spider-Verse, but we haven't met them in the MCU, and so more than likely they're going to be a catalyst for all this happening here, because else it would come off as a bit forced. But that likely won't happen, and thus the reveal of the villain will be something special. 1. A Culmination Arguably the biggest reason that Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be the best Spider-Man film is that Marvel and Disney know that this might be their last shot. If you recall, Sony and Marvel made a deal to bring Spider-Man into the MCU for Civil War, two Avengers films, and then three solo films overseen by Marvel's head Kevin Feige. But then, Sony broke the deal after Endgame came out and it took some serious pleading and drinking from Tom Holland to get everything back on track. As such, and with Sony growing their own Spider-Verse via the Venom and Morbius films, Disney and Marvel Studios know that they might not get another shot at this. They want to make the best Spider-Man film ever, and everything is built up to this. It's a culmination of storylines, characters, and potential. In fact, if it's not the best Spider-Man film, given all that they are bringing to the table potentially, that would be an extreme disappointment. So, what do you think? What do you think of this look at Spider-Man No Way Home and all the various elements that could go and work to make things as good as possible, and maybe even make it the best Spider-Man film? Are you hoping the Into the Spider-Verse rumors are true? Which of the characters do you want to see interact with Spider-Man? What's your current favorite Spider-Man film? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.